Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 7 where I show you my plans. But before we do that, let's see who did well in Game Week 6. Top scorer in our mini league for Game Week 6 was Daniel Butler with Hallandas. It's a good name. With massive 97 points. That was with Palmer 25, Captain Seller 20, Watkins 11, Gvardiol 9, Jota 8, Rogers 7, Semenyo 7, Havertz 6. And then on the bench, Harwood Bellis for 7, but hey, who needs those 7? <laughs> that was very good. And then top of our league is Keith Drayton with Drayton Rovers with 63 points. That was with Palmer 25, Mbremo 9, Rogers 7, Robinson 7, and then Haaland 4. And on the bench, look at that, perfect. Absolutely no points at all. <laughs> very impressive. I'm all the way down in 318th. I, I got 46 points, which uh, is quite good. Happy about that. That was Watkins 11 and Bremo 9, Rogers 7, and then Captain Harlan 4. Oh, Jackson got 5. But look at that. On my bench, I had McNeil for 15. Now, it, it really doesn't bother me that he was on my bench because he's so low owned. All that happened as a result of that is he goes up in value. And the first six weeks, I was just chasing money. So it's kind of all right. So 46 points, but I did take an 8-point hit last week, so it's really more like 38 points. Game week rank around the 6 million mark. So four red arrows in the last five weeks. I'm around the 3 million mark, and I'm 165 from top spot. But if I can outscore the leader by 6 points a week between now and the end of the season, I can still win the whole thing. Thank you very much to everyone who <laughs> subscribes and watches these videos of me just rambling on and leaves comments it is very much appreciated hopefully you get something out of it i don't know what it is but thanks for watching my plan this season was for the first six game weeks try and make maybe two million more team value than the other teams and then to go very template until near the end of the season and then maybe pick some differentials so my plan was the first couple of game weeks i can play some chips then i would take lots of hits up to game week six and it was all about transferring in players that were going up in value, dumping players that might be going down just to get the money. And like I said, I was fine to take hits. And then up to game week 19, which is the end of the year, just go very template. Up to the end of game week 29, stay template. And the last game weeks, safe differentials are going to call them. So it may go slightly different there. And then my targets for the rank was for game week 6. By the end of there, if I could be within the top 6.4 million, because I thought I'd be taking lots of hits, and I'd be happy with that. As it is, I'm within the top 3 million, so that was nice. And then by the end of the year, be within the top 1.6 million. By the end of game week 29, the top 800,000. And by the end of the season, top 40,000. They're the goals. So I've made the rank goals so far, but what about the money? Let's look at that. So this is the FPL Game Week website. And you can look at the Content Creators League on here. And when I look at that and order by team value, I do have the best team value of 102.6. The next best is 101.8. That's FPL Tips and Javid. So I'm 0.8 better than the next best. 0.9 better than Harry. He's very popular. He's very good. And he's the template king. So I'd really like to beat him this season, play him at his own game. So comparing my team to the rest of the Content Creators, my team value is one. 102.6 and their average is 101.1 so I'm one and a half million better off than they are my score is 371 the average is 388.6 so I'm about 18 points behind the rest but one and a half million better off and although it's only one and a half not two million I think that should still be enough to mean that I can have slightly better players than the rest so I should gradually catch them up so as of tonight which is Thursday my squad value is 102.2. I've got 0.9 in the bank. So I'm currently worth 103.1. Now I have had a couple of comments from people saying, yes, but that's not really your value. Your value is you have to take all your players out of your team and then see how much money you've got, which I kind of agree with to a sense. And if I do that, I'm worth 101.4 million. But the reality is if I buy Haaland, which I would have Haaland, I don't have to pay 15.3, I actually pay 15.1 because he's already in my squad. And most of my players I'd be happy to have at the moment. So my real value is somewhere between 101.4 and 103.1.
and that was probably very boring for you. But don't worry, after this game week, I won't be going on about money because it's now about points. Back to the Content Creators League, the top Content Creators FPL Tips, and I've looked on YouTube and Twitter, and I can't actually see a picture of FPL Tips, so I'm just putting their logo up. They're on 451. James from Planet FPL is in second place, and I really enjoy listening to the Planet FPL podcast. Totally worth listening to. If you're like me and you're happy to potter about in the garden, I just put it on and listen to him. Anyway, he's been without Haaland all season, so that's an interesting tactic. Works right for him. And then FPL Juice, Ash from FPL Juice, down in third. I'm all the way down in 53rd with 371 points, which is the same score as Raptor, but Raptor's ahead of me because he's only made four transfers and I've made 13. And then we're both one point behind Andy, who's probably the most popular content creator. So what are my transfer plans? Now I'm finally free from having to make transfers every week. I'm just going to do nothing. Unless something unforeseen happens between now and the start of game week seven, I'm not going to make any changes. So how am I lining up for game week seven? Well, Harlan at home to Fulham. He gets to wear the old mule hat. He's the captain with his mates Edison and Lewis. I've got Mbremo as vice captain at home to Wolves. I've got Gabrielle at home to Southampton. And I will admit I do feel very exposed for having only one Arsenal player. So I don't have Saka, don't have Havertz, don't have Martinelli, no Trossard, no Raya. They're all very popular choices. So if if Southampton lose 4-5-0 to Arsenal, that could be quite punishing for me. But the next three fixtures for Arsenal aren't so good. So... Over the next four weeks as a whole, I'm all right having only one Arsenal player. But for this one game week, it is a bit scary. Then I've got Rodgers at home to United with Watkins. I've got McNeil at home to Newcastle. I've got Jackson at home to Forest. And then I've got Trent and Luis Diaz away to Palace. So that's how I'm lining up. And then for my bench, I've got Ramsdale, nice cheap first choice keeper, away to Arsenal. And then I've got Robertson on the bench. Smithrow and Bednarak and then as for the background picture that's kind of how I've been feeling the last six game weeks for the FPL I'm just sitting there doing nothing as in I'm not doing what I want to do I'm buying players I don't really want to buy and selling players I don't really want to sell just to make the money but it's always been the case from game week seven I can kind of start playing so I've been really looking forward to game week seven because this is where my season starts So there we have it, what happened in game week six and what my plans are for game week seven and how happy and relieved I am that I can finally start playing FBL. The last six weeks have been a bit weird, but if I can finish in the top 40k, then I'll consider this season a success and I think my plan probably worked. Thank you very much for watching and whatever your plans are regarding FBL, I hope you have fun. Thanks, bye. (laughs)